Robin, you are the global lead of family business for KPMG Private Enterprise. How can family businesses better nurture entrepreneurship across generations? So we're actually doing a family business survey this year on looking at how families do nurture entrepreneurship across generations. And part of that we think is linked to the legacy that family businesses create. And so looking at, I guess, what the idea of legacy is and how it applies to family businesses probably is a combination of factors, probably linked to more tangible assets. So things that are passed down from families from generation to generation and the sentimental and emotional value that's attached to those. The actual wealth of the family that's passed from a generation to the next and that includes the family business itself. But I think most importantly, the idea of legacy that is the more intangible. So pride in the family name, pride in being part of the bloodline, uh, the stories that come with family businesses, how they've been set up, the challenges that founders faced, the various um, chapters in the family business, how they evolved and how families addressed them. That I think is the real um, crux of legacy and what inspires families to I guess continue that entrepreneurship to the next generation. Family offices have become a key source of startup funding. How have family offices evolved in the last 10 years as we see more startups seeking capital? When family offices fund startups, I like to think it comes with a bit of a difference to perhaps an institutional uh, injection of capital. So family offices have that concept of patient capital, that long-term lens that they apply to their investments, which gives uh, founders the opportunity to scale their business in a sustainable way and provides that long-term lens. And ideally, the family office would work with the founder in partnership. And that's what I think we like to see as a successful arrangement between a family office and a founder. We've actually got some great family offices who are working with founders in a broader way than just contributing capital and that's a really positive thing as well. So uh, we've seen family offices provide mentoring, um, provide seats on the board and um, also education and access to their networks which is really uh, helpful for founders and something that they wouldn't otherwise have had access to if they'd gone down a more institutional route. So do you have any positive examples of where a family office has actually implemented uh, ESG initiatives? Yeah, there's, there's quite a few examples and I think the biggest one for family offices is that idea of conscious capitalism. So family offices professionalising, becoming more sophisticated and applying governance frameworks as to how they're going to allocate their capital and that idea of impact investing. So family offices pausing, reflecting on what is the purpose of wealth, how much is enough, how are we going to use it for good and, um, and then embedding that in the way that they allocate their capital to investments so that they want their capital but to not only give them a financial return but also to be used in a um, socially responsible way and a sustainable way and for the betterment of the planet. So when you look ahead 12 to 18 months from now, what are some of the emerging trends you expect to see when it comes to family businesses or family offices? So first of all, um, the trend of increasing digital transformation across family businesses in particular is really important. And um, families need to, I guess, focus on modernising not just their operational practices, but also delivering a better digital experience for a lot of their customers. Probably another trend would be, as you've already referred to, the embedding of ESG practices within the family business. And the trend that we've continued to see for some time is uh, mainly as a function of the, the demographics of global population, that of succession. And, you know, in an age where people tend to biologically last longer than perhaps their ability to cognitively function well, um, identifying succession issues earlier and being proactive is important. How can they prepare for these changes to ensure continued success? In terms of business preparation on business operation and the digital transformation piece, really not being afraid to leverage external advice, not being afraid to leverage external resources coming into perhaps your executive management team or your C-suite doesn't necessarily have to keep it all in the, in the family if the family doesn't have the skill set. Not being afraid to bring in externals at your board level, once again to broaden the lens and, and the skill set that's available to you. And in terms of succession, I, it's, it's I guess deliberately uh, and intentionally having conversations about what does the future look like, what does good look like for the family, and having some clarity and transparency around that is really important for everybody.